promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hello and welcome Cheap Shot Nation. Once again, I am your host Luke and we're going through our retro reviews for Cheap Shot Entertainment. <clears throat> Today we're looking at King of the Ring 2002. It happened on June 23rd. This video is being released 20 years after the event. The arena is in the video games Raw 2 and Smackdown Shut Your Mouth. It also took place in the uh, Columbus, Ohio and there was 14,198 people packed into, into the arena for this one. We're joined on commentary by the classic duo of Jerry Lawler and good old JR, one of the best, in my opinion, uh, combinations for commentary in wrestling history. But needless to say, we're going to get on to the main part of the video slash podcast. And uh, we hope that you join us there. Join us on social media at Cheap Shot Entertainment on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Various iterations of which are at the top of the main page of the YouTube channel. And uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. It is the bread and butter of what we do and why we do it. But ultimately, I'm just a wrestling fan with a lot of nostalgia for things that happened 20 years ago. And I hope you are too. So let's go back and enjoy King of the Ring 2002. So, King of the Ring 2002 is the classic pay-per-view that introduced the whole concept of having a tournament in the space of one full pay-per-view. Of course, there was other matches as well, but we go through the quarterfinals, semifinals and finals, um, and this happens on a yearly basis and still goes off today. It doesn't quite get the fanfare that it gets now, but... Um, I still really like this format, and I think uh, it should definitely come back as a pay-per-view. Um, anyway, the King of the Ring took place, Columbus, Ohio, Nationwide Arena, um, around about three hours worth of pay-per-view goodness, and of course, preceding the King of the Ring uh, pay-per-view, Sunday Night Heat, featuring the Hardy Boys, Matt and Jeff Hardy, defeating Raven and Stephen Richards. But we go straight to the semi-final. Sorry, I did get that wrong. It is just the semi-final and the finals uh, in this uh, on this pay-per-view. Go to the first semi-final now. It is Rob Van Dam versus Chris Jericho. And uh, these two have been back and forth in for a long time, uh, especially in 2002. Um, RVD comes into this match as the Intercontinental Champion as well. So that's tied up in this tournament. Gives you an indication of how much they put on Rob Van Dam and his star power. Anyway, Rob Van Dam would come out on top here uh, with a five-star frog splash. But uh, really, really good match, as you can expect from both of these two uh, cutting their teeth in uh, what we would call smaller um, companies and then coming over to WWE for the big payoff. But uh, yeah, five star frog splash for the win. I'm going to give this one 3.5 cheap shots out of five. And of course, it's not quite over because there is attack. Is an attack rather after the match um, from Jericho as uh, he has his way with RVD and we. Move then to a backstage segment with Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, uh, where Brock is compared to Godzilla. And that exactly that is exactly what he is, because this means that Brock Lesnar 
is going into his semi-final match with a massively inflated ego and a tiny little brain. Anyway, we're going to the second semi-final now. It is Brock Lesnar versus Test, who has had a bit of a renaissance after his uh, bit of a meteoric rise and then having his thing with Stephanie and then Triple H coming in and Test being forgotten about pretty much. Um, going back in here, semi-final of the King of the Ring. But he's against Brock Lesnar. We all know how this one ends. Brock Lesnar hits an F5 uh, to win. And Paul Heyman screams, you did it. You did it. You did it. Uh, Paul Heyman is a manager that I aspire to be. Um, he is so good uh, at what he does. I'm going to give this one 3.5 cheap shots out of 5 as well. Because it is, you know, it's a King of the Ring tournament match. It's decent and uh, it plays to the strengths of Brock Lesnar taking out a bigger opponent as well uh, when he's just been beating up the smaller people like the Hardy Boys and things like that this really sort of cemented his uh, legacy uh, to start so yeah 3.5 cheap shots out of five for this one we go into a backstage segment again as coach interviews superstars about Brock Lesnar coming across Bubba Ray Dus Dudley who says that Brock will definitely win giving his prediction just saying that he's huge he's powerful he's young and he's very very hungry and uh, yeah it is <clears throat> it is what it is um, we all like I say it's a, it's a retro review so there's nothing you don't really know here, but perhaps this is jogging your memory. Uh, Christian believes that America is prejudiced against other countries, particularly the Canadians, because there's no Canadian contingent in the final of the King of the Ring, uh, as Christian would do. Uh, of course, now on AEW. Um, Cruiserweight Championship is up for grabs next. It is the Hurricane Champion versus Jamie Noble with Nydia. Um, Nydia is quite new to the company, won the uh, female part of the first ever Tough Enough, along with Maven being the male winner. And um, yeah, Jamie Noble is so good during this era. The whole uh, Cruiserweight Championship thing was just quality television at the time. I used to tune in to SmackDown every week just to watch storylines within the cruiserweight division and this match was no different it was so good it was cruiserweights in the style of wwe when it was good and they allowed them to do different things but both of these guys although they are classed as cruiserweights they do have a hard-hitting smash mouth style that um, the bigger guys would have as well um so for example it was a power bomb that would win the championship jamie noble is first of very many um after nidia moves the foot off the ropes for the hurricane uh, so he hits a power bomb hurricane gets the uh, foot on the ropes but nidia moves it and therefore jamie noble becomes champion this match is absolutely fantastic and so far on this card the best match that I've seen for a very long time, especially in 2002. I'm going to give it a damn, perf damn near perfect 4.5 cheap shots out of five because it is that good. So um, we move on now to a backstage segment after the conclusion of the next match, which features Ric Flair and Eddie Guerrero uh, doing a battle of uh, wills between each other because Ric Flair is sort of transitioning into a um, wrestling role from being an authority role and Eddie Guerrero doesn't like that uh, this this mini revival of the uh, radicals is on the way um, really like the radicals by the way thought they were a great group uh, but Ric Flair would defeat Eddie Guerrero um, at his own game. Um, both these guys are known very much for cheating. And uh, yes, it would be 
pretty much that that would get Chris Benoit, who was out there with Eddie Guerrero, uh, thrown out of the arena. He would be ejected. And as that was happening, the referee's back was turned. Bubba Ray would roll in and hit the bubble bomb on on uh, Eddie Guerrero just in time for Ric Flair to crawl into the pin. Now, that being said, this match was actually pretty decent up to the interference. So I'm going to I'm gonna deduct some points because there was too much. So I'm going to go with a three cheap shots out of five for this one. Perfectly good match. Runnings are OK if they're done correctly and there's not too many of them. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's it is what it is. It's a filler match, isn't it? Uh, at the end of the day. So uh, we move now to the world and our favourite segment, known as which WWE jobber is it? WWF New York, because it's now called the world, and they didn't have a spot on the card. It is, in fact, Christopher Nowinski, who absolutely deserves to not have a spot on the card. And uh, William Regal, who is conspicuous by his absence, absence on the main card. Not his abstinence, so it's completely different. It's his absence. Because William Regal is God. Uh, but they, understandably, being the heels that they are, um, being snobs, um, annoy the waitress enough for her to stick a finger in Christopher Nowinski's food. And I thought this segment was actually pretty funny. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll move on. We go now to the women's championship match. It is Molly Holly versus Trish. And, uh, yeah, uh, sadly didn't get enough time, as I usually say, with the women's matches in 2002. It was actually a really good match. And both these ladies deserve much better. And they would get that later down the line. But it's really sad at this point in time that they don't. Um, but either way, Trish would put up a really good fight. And uh, Molly Holly would win with underhanded tactics. Roll up for the win. And a handful of tights to make sure that that would happen. Um, and this is uh, all happening after Molly misses the Molly go round. And um, so, you know, it's uh, sadly, I want to give it more, but I can't because there's, there's not much to it. So I'm going to give this one 1.5 cheap shots out of five. And uh, yeah, it, like I say, the evolution of the women's division would get much better as we went on in time. We get the battle of two absolute legends next. It is Kurt Angle versus Hulk Hogan to find out who is the true, real American. It's true. It's true, brother. Anyway, um, this was actually a decent match. Obviously, Angle carried most of it. Hogan can still work the crowd. We found that out in WrestleMania 18. Um, but it would be Kurt Angle who would get the victory here with an ankle lock submission move after Hogan appealed to the crowd a little bit too much um, about uh, Angle's hair. Uh, and and uh, he was wearing Angle's fake hair, obviously. He had uh, a match with Edge at the previous pay-per-view, uh, Judgment Day which was hair versus hair, and he lost his hair. So he got a wig, and he put the the wrestling ear defenders on, and Hulk Hogan was taking the mickey out of Kurt Angle a little bit. That got him angry. Straps came down, ankle lock, locked in, and the real American, whoa, is Kurt Angle. I'm going to give this one 3.5. Cheap shots out of five. And, uh, yeah, it's a... Decent match, a decent card actually so far. I'm really impressed with this. But we go into a backstage segment now with Booker T and Gold Dust. Although he is dressed as Gold Rock today, with the little eyebrow uh, painted above his uh, above his own eyebrow in the black and gold signature paint of 
the uh, the rock. Um, uh, sorry, of gold dust. Uh, this is the uh, rock, but um, yeah, the rock would come in and cut a promo, and it was great. And I can't actually remember what he said, but it was awesome because it's the rock, uh, and uh, gold dust goes away with his tail between his legs. But the whole point of this segment is to try and get Booker T and Gold Dust back together because Booker T has joined the N NWO at this point. Uh, we go now on to the finals um, of the uh, King of the Ring tournament. Uh, it is Brock Lesnar versus Rob Van Dam. And uh, yeah, another really good match, actually, considering these two have had matches previously. Obviously, Brock's match didn't quite go as long as RVD's match. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, um, it, it was decent. And obviously, Paul Heyman was at ringside, so I'm re very happy. Um, it was a springboard moonsault from... RVD after getting the upper hand to use his speed against Brock Lesnar's power. Uh, Springboard Moonsault, uh, which was caught by the monstrous Brock Lesnar, thrown into an F5, and Lesnar wins the King of the Ring tournament. Uh, after this, uh, all this, after Heyman takes a spill to the outside, uh, courtesy of RVD. Uh, but it's much publicised that the King of the Ring did used to lead to some sort of reward, and it wasn't just a mockery. Um, and Lesnar would get a title shot, a title shot at SummerSlam against the uh, owner of the Undisputed Championship. Uh, I'm going to give this one 3.5 cheap shots out of 5. So we move on to the uh, undisputed championship match next. But before we get into that, Triple H bumps into the NWO of running buddies, of course, uh, who say that they will do anything they want. So all he has to do is throw up the sign. And we know which sign that is. It's the sign for the click. Um, so, um, yeah, offering. Uh, Triple H some assistance if he should need it against the Undertaker. Uh, like I say, Undisputed Championship match is up next, and it is the Undisputed Champion, Undertaker, who won the title from Hulk Hogan against Triple H, the man who won the title from Chris Jericho at WrestleMania 18. Uh, so you know you're going to get a good match. Between with these two, and it was no different here. Uh, whistle stop tour here. Triple H uh, lands a pedigree, but Hebner uh, is taken out earlier in the match. Uh, the Greatest Falls of Bill Hebner, a six disc DVD box set with extras. Um, and uh, it was uh, Triple H who tries to revive F. Hebner uh, to try and get the pin. It would be Taker trying to get the getting the roll up here uh, with a handful of trunks, much like the women's championship match uh, with uh, Molly Holly doing the same thing for Trish. Um, three cheap shots out of five. Good match, but again, just way, way, way too much happening uh, as The Rock takes out The Undertaker uh, with The Rock bottom. And the people's elbow. Triple H finally comes round and takes out the rock with the pedigree. Taker comes back and takes out Triple H with the choke slam and walks away with the championship uh, in his grasp. Um, so I'm going to give, like I said, given this one three point uh, three cheap shots out of five. Uh, not the greatest from these two, but perfectly good. I'd say I always take points off too much interference, and I think this was one of those cases. But uh, yeah, it's um, King of the Ring 2002, actually pretty solid pay per view. 
Uh, if you're going back and wanting something nostalgic that you can just sit down and watch and enjoy, this one is definitely up there with the top pay per views of 2002. And that being said, 2002 is a very good year for WWE and for wrestling in general. Um, but I just love the King of the Ring tournament in general anyway. Uh, this would be actually the uh, 10th annual King of the Ring, in fact. So, um, it's, uh, yeah, really interesting that uh, you know, we, we get to 10. And uh, I don't think they did a 2003 King of the Ring. I might be wrong on that one, but I think the tournament then existed as a, as a separate thing, um, sporadically. There's no sort of time frame for it. It's like, oh, yeah, let's do a King of the Ring tournament. Uh, last winner being Xavier Woods, obviously. Um, so, yeah, really good pay-per-view. But, um, yeah, if you're enjoying the retro reviews, uh, like in listening to my voice, you crazy, crazy people, uh, and hearing my thoughts on the wrestling that that made us in 2002, uh, then please do click that subscribe button and like the video. We'll also be doing these on podcasts as well if you don't have time to watch and listen. Uh, not that there's loads going on, but uh, yeah, if you don't have time to watch and listen and you want to listen to it on the way to work or whatever, then we're going back to the Talk is Cheap podcast, um, probably from SummerSlam 2002. I think we'll go back to uh, to um, the podcast as well as doing the video and putting it on here as well. So um, that's something to look forward to. It's something I want to do for a while. I've got a couple of other uh, wrestlers lined up to do some interviews and things like that. So um, yeah, watch this space. The podcast is on its way back. Um, and speaking of uh, on its way back, we've got some wrestling shows for you, some good wrestling shows from the local area, which I fully plan to go to. One or two of them, I'm actually on myself as the Reverend. Follow me on Instagram, at Messiah of Aspire. And uh, also follow Cheap Shot Entertainment on Cheap Shot entertainment on instagram twitter facebook um and uh, yeah get the conversation going if you love the king of the ring pay-per-view shows uh then get in contact with us by any of those means uh once again you are the cheap shot nation we really appreciate you uh supporting us through the tough times of 2020 and early 2021 when the show really picked up and continuing to do so and hearing my thoughts on some indie shows and going to um really promoting trying to promote the uh local shows for the local companies but that being said the um, um the spy wrestling alliance is on tour in july doing lots of park type shows and fun days we're at oak fest on the 3rd of july which is a sunday saturday the 9th we're at uh, a primary school fun day uh, on the 16th of July. We've got a heat wave at St. Martin's. That is our official show. On the 24th, we're at Alverston Park for their fun day. And on Sunday, July 31st, we've got Chadderston's big one. Hope you can all make your way down there uh, as if you can, obviously. And uh, I'll see you in the next retro review. Thank you very much for watching. And goodbye. Hiya.